Hello everyone, we're going to be going through many different posts on the R. Kurosanji subreddit. A lot of these are going to be drama posts and opinions and allegations and such. Unless there is other proof, take it as an opinion piece and take it as allegations. And I will have as many sources as possible. But if no sources are there, then that means it's just an allegation, a shiitake post, whatever you want to call it. It is to be taken as an opinion. Thank you. If you remember, I talked about this whole Vox situation where he was told to graduate. Uh, can anyone with Billy Billy account and confirm this is real? People down here says, clarify this was posted yesterday as well. This is real. And this was from a completely different incident. It wasn't from this current incident that's happening. It was, I think he made some weird mom jokes in the past. And the Chinese didn't like that because, you know, Chinese have and a lot of Asian cultures have reverence for their elders and they have reverence for family. So that's not a good one. A lot of things from the West do not translate well to the East or to Asian countries. Uh, it's real but old. It's not like this is unusual. Vox has gotten a lot of S from Chinese community since his peak in 2022. There's a massive list of S they hate him for. Uh, to the long collapse before any of the uh, he long collapsed before any of the S happened recently. The list, they list it like a commended crimes or some S. Not weird for him to get harassed like this. Check profile, look for comments. The short answer is it's true. It's an old video, 2022. Can you see the real chat down on the left? I think I'm not familiar with Billy Billy. Didn't know if it works differently. Uh, whenever I read the word graduate, this automatically pops up in my mind. So it was a 2022 incident. It was a bit of a clarification that I wanted to give you guys because some people were wondering what it was happening from. And this was basically it. It was from 2022, but still, the fact that he was ever told to graduate since he is so popular on Billy Billy, so popular on so many different platforms, seems kind of crazy. I mean, and in my mind, it seems kind of crazy. By now, y'all know I like memes. So we're going to go and take a look at this meme, of course. In a franchise piled high with underage bodies. Okay, yeah, sure. All those other kids, nah, they deserved it. But that one, that one right there, yep, shouldn't have touched him. Now you're damned for all eternity. My not is fucking sinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not the termination of 87. Yes, it was termination of 87. Who's the second one next to you go? Gundo Mire. Yes, it was Gundo Mire. And yeah, um, they messed up bad when they got rid of uh, of Selene. Absolutely. <clears throat> they really messed up bad because of the way they got rid of her. It was, if they had just gotten rid of her, terminated her under normal circumstances, be like, you know, she broke rules, etc., etc. Okay, I'd be fine. But they really went hard on her. And I think that's what got people very angry. And the fact that they did all these things in the in the background, at least they're accused of doing all these things in the background, that made it even worse for Nidhi Sanji. So all these things, and they're really bad with PR, by the way. So all these things are like, that's why people keep memeing up on them. That's why people keep memeing up on them and doing all these things. This situation happened very recently, happened within the last like two or three days. Uh, Camilla is a larger creator. She's actually pretty darn large. You can see right here, 69.3K followers. On her, She's part of Mythic Talent. On her Twitch TV, she actually has quite a few followers. Like, I think she has more than her Twitter, pretty much. Um, she has, right here, uh, 161K followers. She's part of Mythic Talent. She, you know, is kind of like a um, a person who is a little bit of a troll in, in a good way. In a good way. And here's Shondo, or Shadow. I believe she's also known as Shondo. Shadow is a VTuber who recently had a bit of a hiatus due to health and, you know, mental health reasons and other reasons. She was going through a lot. Uh, temporary health hiatus on April 6th. She was having the whole situation here. Uh, I didn't want to go through with this until she responded, which she did today, uh, because of the fact that, you know, it involved her and it involved, uh, you know, her in a health hiatus. She came back and actually talked about it. What am I talking about? On April 30th, she said, thank you for 66.6K followers. And she did a Lolly Kami Requiem thing here for uh, her, you know, like an animation for the whole Lolly Kami Requiem. It's a very good song. It's basically, you know, pushing the whole Lolly thing and Lolly being an actual size thing, like an actual figure, like petite figure, not the underage thing. And it says, I'm happy to be able to see you grow. You've changed so much since I met you, uh, Mimi. Uh, I guess that's what they call her Camilla. If you don't do double standards, you wouldn't have no standards at all. Uh, that people were judging her on what she did before. And this is what they're talking about when it comes to double standards. This is the situation that happened here. She's it's a big apology and it's an actual good apology. I applaud her for this apology. This is like textbook apology. She was an anti. She was a, a lolly uh, person hater, like a person who hated anyone who liked lollies, person who hated anyone who looked like a lolly, uh, who was an S poster, that type of stuff. So an actual good apology. Hi, posting this because a lot of people are questioning me for posting the Lolly God Requiem video after I admittedly did attack a creator liking that kind of stuff two years ago. When I first started VTubing, I did not understand the culture in the slightest. I was mostly a cringe stand Twitter user, as a lot of people are. So coming into VTubing and anime culture, someone who had zero clue as to what, was anything, what anything was, 
I didn't understand anything, and when I saw a lot of these stuff, I immediately assumed it was that stuff. Keep in keep this part in mind as you're reading the rest. When I first started streaming, I had a bigger content creator convince me that drama equals content, so I should farm that S. So me, still slowly coming out my woke stand Twitter phase and entering the VTuber phase, I saw what a bunch of people were posting about a streamer on Twitter and I immediately jumped on the hate bandwagon because I wanted to take my friend's advice, which led me to call out the girl live on my stream where her name had no business being there. So yeah, uh, drama is not good for a regular VTuber. I am a news VTuber. I am someone who looks at drama online. I look at the stories online. So it is a part of my content, yes. But I don't like bringing drama into my community. And that's what she was doing. She was bringing drama into regular uh, VTubers type of stuff. Like gaming, like just chatting, that type of stuff. You don't want to bring that in because it can bring the bad type of community. A community that you may not be ready to deal with. Looking back at it, I wasn't even trying to criticize. This is the part where she does a really good job of apologizing. I was straight up bullying her and trying to deplatform her when I didn't even know who she truly was as a person. We have so many mutual friends in common, and anytime her name was brought up in idle chit chat, I started feeling really bad. Why? Because everyone had said nothing but nice things about her, and it became more clear to, and clear to me that she did not deserve this. As for apologizing to her, I've reached out to a mutual friend of ours back in February because her DMs are closed in an attempt to send an apology to her. Said friend told me she wasn't answering DMs because it was clear she was going through something at the time, which she was. After starting gain, after I started gaining experience in streaming over the years, I've learned so many things. You'd actually have to be mentally inept to do what I did over a year ago. It's just rude, unnecessary, disrespectful. I know that now. So that's a really good apology so far. And somehow this message gets to you. I'm very sorry for what I did. I didn't know you, and yet I attacked you without educating myself with who you truly are. My behavior was unacceptable. I will continue to learn how to be a better person. Side note, I hope you feel better with what you're dealing with at the moment. It sounds rough, so please take all the time you need to heal. You have so many people with love and appreciation that will be waiting for you in open arms. And I'm sorry to those who I upset with my previous posts. As I've delved deeper into the world of VTubing, I've gained a better understanding of anime culture. I've come to understand that character with youthful uh, appearance are common across media forms. I've come to appreciate their innocence without any negative implications. I pretty much adopted an entirely new outlook on the subject. In conclusion, not the same person I was two years ago. I hate her too. I hope you can give a uh, present me a chance. If not, that's okay. Have a nice day. And here is the proof she has of 2-9-2024 uh, saying, I said something very mean to someone a year ago and you're friends with them, but I have no way of contacting them. Do you think you could pass a message to them for me? I am so disappointed with myself. I'm just trying to let them know I'm sorry. And then people responded with, you know, everything going on here, the um, post engagements. People were like, you know, Shondo responded. That's the one I'm going to get to. People were like, uh, basically people saying she's a grifter. And this, is, and this one's saying, uh, oh, my God, what a genuine apology on Twitter. You know, people were like, oh, my goodness, this is apology. But since then, this is something in the past. This is something in the past that she said. Why did you initially double down on the hate from the post before deleting it? And why did you restrict the comments? And um, I believe she responded to this one. She responded. Uh, let me see uh, the, the responses. Uh, she says, I know she says right here, her response to the video. I know I owe an explanation to this. The, the initial response, the one with me being petty, was in response to those who were literally sending me death threats. I was trying to show them I wasn't afraid. I took it down because I realized it wasn't the proper way to react. And so I decided to do the mature thing and actually own up to my mistakes. It's hard to hear about the death threats. No matter what personal feelings are, I will never condone it and I don't support it. If you have changed, you should be given a chance to do so. Now, I kindly ask everyone else to do as well. So people are giving her a chance. Now, let's go to actual Shadow, the person who was affected by everything. Here she writes, Camilla, I think it takes an incredible amount of strength to look at the person you used to be and see how you have become better. It takes an unimaginable amount to publicly step onto the internet and admit that in front of so an endless ocean of people. We all have things we regret. But I think more importantly than that is how we look back at them and the choices we make in the future when we can reflect on what we did poorly. I have made many of these mistakes myself, especially early into streaming as a new VTuber. So I can definitely understand the best lesson I have learned is always grow and never hold who you were against the current you. And I think I like the current Camilla a lot. She seems very kind and strong. We might not uh, know each other well, but I'm very proud of you for this. And I would like to say that I wholeheartedly and fully forgive you. I don't hold any hard feelings against you. I have been mostly off social media for the last month or so, so catching up on all of this was quite a storm. And of course, it is always wonderful to know how great Lolly Inquisition has claimed another. Welcome in. I'm sorry that you, your friend, couldn't reach me. I have been very bad at replying to messages in the last few months, and I have been struggling, but I have no clue... 
but I had no clue you wanted to talk, and I don't think our friend ever messaged me in the end. But if you would like to talk it through at all, in further or in private, uh, or you want to talk at all anyways, I've followed you. I'm sorry for uh, sorry for, to you and anyone else reading this that I've been terrible at communicating since things were really bad. And thank you, Camilla, sincerely. Reading this made my heart feel really warm. Wishing you well and lots of love. And I said lots of, you know, uh, <clears throat> love to see a good ending. Shondo, love Camilla, love. Uh, love to see this. I'm not crying, you're crying. Mega based, happy ending. It takes a good person to understand they did wrong and learn from that mistakes. Exactly, you learn from the mistakes. Rev says the good ending. It's exactly the best ending that you can have. And that's what I wanted to update you with. I wanted to make sure there was an update from her in order to make sure that everything was covered and I didn't miss anything out there. So this is the Camilla thing. It's over. It's done with. They both talked to, they, they both at least through their messages are talking to each other. They, she, the one who was hurt by her uh, accepted the apology. The apology was a really good apology. So that is the end of that one. At least in, as far as I know, that's the end of that one. Mega based, happy end. Absolutely. Yeah. So Made Mint was part of this pros and cons karaoke relay that had, you know, some people Rin Penrose, it had all these other people, it had a bunch of people from different organizations, different groups, and people who wanted to sing. She did the uh, Snake Eater from Metal Gear Solid. I'm pretty sure it's one of her favorite songs. I've heard a lot of good renditions of it. She killed it. I can only play a section of it for you because, of course, it gets copywritten usually. It, you may not be able to hear it if it gets copywritten on the video. So I apologize for that, but let's go. Let me make sure that the volume is all the way up. I have it at 100%, not 1.25 or anything like that, because I want you to hear this. But you're so supreme. I give my life not for honor, Dude, this is amazing. That is just a small snippet of what she can do. And Niji Sanji lost an amazing talent in Doki Bird, lost an amazing talent in her, uh, Mika Melatika in Matara Khan, who's, you know, who used to be Nina Kosaka, in all these people, in Sayu, they lost amazing talents because Sayu also has good, good uh, vocals. So this is just amazing. And I'm glad that she was able to be in this pros and cons karaoke relay and show her stuff to new people. Because the relay basically is one person starts it, they end it, they raid the next person who starts it, they end it, raid the next person who starts it. That's what the relay is. Basically, hand off to one person or another, basically, as a regular relay would and run, running around the, the track. This is just chef's kiss. I love it. Just wanted you guys to hear it because it is amazing. We're going to be talking about uh, Matara Khan, of course. She is uh, used to be Nina Kosaka from Niti Sanji. And she, right now, she's going to be talking about why she didn't want to join V Shoujo originally. You've worked with Gunrun and haven't asked him what his dreams and aspirations are? Um, I've asked him what his goals were and things like that, because I have a secret to tell you all. When you're having a job interview and they're interviewing you, you should interview them back, right? You should ask them questions back because A, you're kind of curious about it. <laughs> so I definitely asked him a lot of questions about that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's where we are. I don't cry. I make people cry. I like that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know if the shoujo would be a good fit for me. Because I'll be honest with you, I, I, I did not think I wanted to work in a collective again. I, I really did not think I can handle it. I really did not think I had the mental fortitude for it. I did not want to do it again. I was, I was, I was talking myself out of it every step of the way. And here I am! <laughs> Woohoo! And I don't regret it at all. And I'm not contractually obligated to say that. I can say whatever. I don't have any of those clauses. I, I'm, I'm living. I'm living. I'm laughing. I'm loving. I'm hee heeing. I'm lactating. All of the above. But maybe not all of the above, but you, you can figure out which one I'm lying about. Hell yeah, brother. Live, laugh, lactate. You know, you know the line, the usual. Oh yeah, Fonza. Thank you for watch. Uh, thank you for watching and hanging out. Live and learn. I, I think maybe we'll make it into a shirt. I just can't think of. I just can't think of. Why am I yawning? It's 10:30 p.m. Hello. Line of being relaxed. I'm very relaxed with my Momo because I know that if anything happens, I can always eat them. I'm always super comfortable. Thank you for the chatting streams. I got you, darling. I got you. Can I be eaten first? I don't know. Can you? What was the liquor you like? I want to get a cherry ararat. It's a brandy. I haven't. So okay, she mentioned that she didn't want to be a part of a collective. She mentioned I wanted to, you know, not interrupt anything that was going on there. But yeah, she mentioned that she wanted to be part of collective. She did not want to be a part of a collective anymore. The collective that she's talking about is Hollywood or Nidhi Sanji that she was talking about in the past. And um, the shoujo, you know, did the interview as they would, as they should for anybody that's coming in because they need to make sure if, if it's going to be a culture fit. Now, the interview, like she said, she asked Gunrun 
uh, what are his aspirations, and she got a bit of an idea of how everything was going to be. And apparently she liked it enough that she got into V Shoujo. So, like I was saying, she didn't want to be a part of this, but now she is, uh, because, you know, Niri Sanji didn't treat her too well. Uh, she wasn't treated amazingly well in the last company that she was with. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, back and forth. There was a lot of uh, click type of nature from what we have heard in the past. And they made her feel like she is not deserving of, you know, being strong without Niji Sanji. She felt like she couldn't be something without Niji Sanji. And now she knows she can. And now she knows she has her community. And her community will not abandon her. As long as she doesn't do any big mess ups, of course. Because a big mess up, your community will leave. We know that, uh, at least we've been hearing recently, that Vishojo at least treats people like humans, tries to treat them like a family. You know, as much as a, as a company can treat you like a family, because sometimes when companies say we treat you like a family, it's kind of the red flag for some people. But let's see what, what Iron Mouse had to say about this. Something they'll do it, which is insane. And what blows my mind is, like, let's say they'll say, like, Why oh, she bouncy? we'll do this by tomorrow. And they need an extra, like, two hours to work on it. They'll apologize. And I'm like, girl, like, I wasn't even, honestly, like, honest to God, I did not even expect you to finish it tomorrow. Like, it's so much work that it's unrealistic for you to finish it in a day. But they do. And I was like, shit, you'll do anything at this point. My goodness. What if I ask for a pony? Think about that. Well, I mean, one of the staff members flew to where I live. Oh, we set up my entire oh, yeah. on setup. Gono was going to come to my house to set up my, my stuff when I moved. Oh, oh wow. Yep, he was, he was going to fly out to my house and set up all my stuff because I needed help. But instead he offered to I, I i you know i didn't feel comfortable but also at the time i was getting like very ill so i was like i don't know if it would be good if he came over so he just offered to do like a guide or like to talk to like whoever sets up my stuff so oh wow sister come and help and they ended up doing it but he was completely 100 percent ready to come to my house no joke oh i'm so nice I'm telling you, like, uh, Gun is like the nicest person you'll ever meet. He's a genuinely nice person, genuinely a nice guy. I, I have, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm an industry veteran, blah, 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 but I have talked to so many people and literally everybody who, have, who has ever met Gun has only ever had nice things to say about him. Mm -hmm. That's no one very has ever good. said anything mean about this man and it's because he's a fucking saint. All of our staff are fucking lovely. They're fucking, um, He truly really cares about people, like, literally, like, he will, he will cry and, and get emotional over things and there have been, like, things that, that I've accomplished and, like, like, almost as if he was, like, my dad. He would take me things and, like, we had like there was this thing for like uh the immune deficiency foundation and he, oh, yeah. he went to it and and he's done so much like he he just really cares he really that's does. pretty good that's, real. that's the way it should and be all the awards they have you on the tablet take me to the yeah <laughs> like they don't have to do all that stuff he's he's the ceo he doesn't have to get involved but he does anyway because he wants to and, and then he'll eat like even if you don't even work for him he'll help you how many vtubers yeah, have been yeah. at convention yeah. events where it's like yep. holy shit they need tech help even if you're yep. not a vtuber irl people if they need any type of help he is always there to help he will drop everything that he has to help you and he will figure out a solution to your problem it doesn't matter who the fuck you are where you're from yep. uh, like i mean he did that with k9 cooler he did that with matara he did that with everybody you're a small streamer big streamer and it doesn't matter he will help you because he likes helping people and that's why wow. I, I love him and that's why i will always rep this company till the day i fucking die Unless they fuck me over, but they never will because I know because we're not going here. Thanks, man. I see. <laughs> That's really good. That's what you want to hear. That's exactly what you want to hear when it comes to a company like that. Uh, of course, every single company, every single company has its ups and downs. Every single company has bad parts of it. The fact is, Gun Run seems to have people who know what the hell they're doing. He himself knows what the heck he's doing. He knows that having someone like Iron Mouse in there is going to help a lot. He knows that keeping them happy is going to help a lot. Just like Hololive and Tanigo, uh, Motoaki Tanigo, Yago does, the CEO, he makes sure that his talents are treated well, which is very, very important in every single way. And I'm glad that to hear at least that Gunrun isn't the type of person like Riku is. And yeah, uh, I want to do a bit of an update on the whole Saya Synchronicity thing. She basically has said, oh God, I'm not ready to stop. Ah, basically she's freaking out. Uh, thank you guys so much. Never been so good at making YouTube content. So this amount of support is just unbelievable to me. Honestly, I want to make better content for you and I'll, to, to deserve you. So I'll keep working on it. And uh, hopefully I can learn and improve over time. Thank you all so much for supporting me and allowing my dreams to live. I'll keep working towards that happy ending for us. And I said, on to bigger and greater things in your future, Sai. We'll be behind you 100%. And back here, Sai is found, Wayu's found son says, congratulations, my Kamiyoshi. You deserve the success. I'm so very proud of you. Uh, this accomplishment has been a long time coming, and I'm glad to see it. Now I can see Sayo 100K. Synchronicity has a nice ring to it. I'm so happy I could be your found son. I'm happy I found you. So this is uh, why he's found son, the person that watches my streams, person that is on my streams, and um, they allowed me to read this. So I'm reading it for them. And yes, it is a wonderful time for Sayu. For uh, it's a bit of you know, it's a little bit a little bittersweet because I'm pretty sure she wanted to do this under Nidhi Sanji. But the uh, way that it went through 
it's better for her to do it on her own because now she knows that she did it on her own. She didn't have to have anybody help her out with anything going on. So it's vindication of showing how much of a good content creator she is because she's actually a pretty good content creator. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.